Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the Covenant Eyes podcast. I am Karen, one of the hosts. I have Rob Stoddard over there kicking it as my sidekick today. How's it going? Good, good. Good to be here. Uh, We're excited for this one. We've got a it's an amazing guest tonight. And uh, so our, with us tonight, we have Wade, DJ Wade O'Harris. And uh, he's a pastor. He is a uh, DJ and produces his own syndicated uh, hip hop, Christian hip hop show on uh, Holy Culture Radio. So we just uh, so thankful to have you with us tonight, Wade. Uh, go ahead and please just give us a little bit of uh who you are and what you're up to, and uh, we'll we'll take it from there. Yeah, thank you. I mean, first of all, thank you guys for having me on. Um, but yeah, I I DJ. I'm a pastor, but I'm a husband. I'm a father. I'm a son. I'm a friend. Uh, I got a lot of stuff going. Um, but yeah, I, I have a a syndicated radio show on Holy Culture Radio, uh, which I love to be a part of. Uh, we're on the Series XM platform, channel 140. Uh, you can listen to me every night from six to eight. But I also uh, work at an amazing church here in the Raleigh-Durham metro area called Hope Community Church. Uh, we're multi-site, uh, so we have five locations, but we also have, obviously, online like most churches. Uh, and I'm heavily involved with that, so I lead our digital discipleship team, uh, which includes a new podcast that we just launched called Hope in Real Life. So you could definitely tune into that. Uh, it features our lead pastor, Jason Gore. Uh, but we're also working on a mobile app called the Hope in Real Life mobile app. And uh, I'm also involved with our online services. So I got a lot of stuff going on. I used to coach basketball too. So if we have did this about nine months ago, I'd have said I'm a, I'm a youth sports coach too. But I had to, I had to retire from coaching because <laughs> – uh, God was calling me into so much ministry, but uh, thank you guys again for having me. And I'm just, just excited to share today. Absolutely. Wow. You are one busy guy. I don't know how you keep it all straight, but we are so <laughs> glad. We're so glad you do because you're doing a lot for the kingdom. And I, if, you know, if there's listeners out there that haven't checked out um, Holy Culture Radio, it's a great program. Like I, you know, if you're looking to vibe out your day, the work, I just put it on and just listen while I'm working. It's great. So um, I love what you're doing, but talk to our listeners a little bit about how you got into being a DJ and, and music wow. and where this passion came from. So uh, I grew up in church, but I was one of those kids that didn't have a relationship, Karen. And so, um, you know, I, I knew all the Bible stories. Um, I was in Sunday school every week, but I didn't quite have that relationship with the Lord. And I always loved music. And so what happened was when I went to college, Uh, I really got into music. I majored in business, but I like to say I minored in radio, even though I didn't take any radio classes because I was always at the radio station. And so I learned to DJ. I started DJing in clubs and parties. And, you know, I really got a chance to rub shoulders and DJ events with some pretty big names in the music industry, Eminem, Ashanti, DMX. Um, And then I got saved literally right after college. And so um, I had no idea what I was going to do with this music thing, but I, you know, I still have my business degree. So I just got a corporate job and say, Hey, I just, you know, just start making money and, uh, find a church. Uh, cause I moved to New Jersey at this point. And I had a youth pastor who said, man, you've got this gift that, um, you're just sitting on and you're not doing anything with it. And I literally, uh, began DJing for the Lord at that point. And so I, I actually started a podcast. So my syndicated radio show, the Wade O Radio Show, started as a podcast. And uh, I was just playing Christian rap music and interviewing artists uh, who weren't known to the masses yet. People like Lecrae and Trip Lee and Andy Minio and the Cross Movement. And uh, I just kind of stayed involved with it over the years. And the Lord has just done some amazing things with it. And so uh, I love music. I mean, I literally have my turntables right here next to me off camera. Let me, I'm going to see if I could pan the camera right there. You can see my turntables. That's right. awesome. Yeah. So I'm a, I'm a, um, I'm a music head. I mean, and these are, these are, these are 30 years old. These turntables next to me. Um, these are technique 1200s. And so I love it. I love the music. I, I you know, I, I, cause I feel like, Music is one of those things that brings people together, yes. all races, all ethnicities, all ages. It brings people together. And then you put a message like the gospel with the music, which is the greatest message in the world. And you have a recipe for something special. And so 
uh, I, it's an honor to be able to do it, honestly. Um, and it's just, a, a, you know, it's just, it's the Lord. And so, uh, you know, but that's how I got into it. That's awesome. Oh my gosh. I grew up in the nineties. So, you know, it was hard. I got saved uh, when I was 18. So I was okay. just coming out of the nineties. Okay. I love nineties music. Okay. Yes. I grew up with that. Yes. And one of the saddest things for me that, um, you know, when I became a Christian and I was like, okay, and what kind of music can we listen to? And I was like, <laughs> oh my gosh, there wasn't a lot out there. There yeah. wasn't Christian rap music. So I love that you are bringing that to the forefront and that you've just really been instrumental in kind of getting new artists out there because it is so important. We need workout music. We need stuff that, yes. you know, motivates us and yes. encourages us. And music really does tie people together. So I love well, it. That, that was the thing is I, I think at that stage, cause I'm a, I'm a nineties guy too. Um, they're they're just it was harder to make Christian rap music at that point because mm -hmm. right what what happens now is you can get a microphone for three hundred dollars and a laptop and you can literally record an album with just that setup back in the 90s you needed to go to a recording studio you needed to have a big budget you needed to have someone distribute your music and put it in Christian bookstores or some other place like a Best Buy or something and now uh, you know, a lot of these a lot of these artists are making music in their homes. They're uploading it to Spotify and Apple Music and, you know, making TikTok videos to promote it. And they're going viral. And so uh, the barriers to entry are lower, which means more people are doing it, which means the quality of the music is higher. And so if you're one of those people who hasn't given Christian rap a chance because you think it's inferior I'm just going to tell you right now, you're missing out because it is not inferior. In fact, I would challenge you to say that in many cases, it's superior and not just because of the message, because of the talent of the artists that are involved. And so uh, it's an honor to be a part of the community. Um, I meet brothers and sisters literally from all over the country and all over the world who are doing this, who love the Lord. And um, they just they encourage me. These songs encourage me. I mean, I, I don't play music just to play music because it's a you know, this person's a name or whatever. The music I play on my show is literally music that inspires and encourages me that I have my kids listen to when I'm not on the air. So tune in, holy culture. <laughs> that's that, as cool. That's so cool. So wait, I wanted to ask you, so, um, sure. you know, how, how do you use this? Can you use this as an outreach? Because, mm. you know, this music is, you know, cross-cultural. Um, yep, yep. But, most in the early days of of hip hop and rap and those types of things, the, the lyrics, you know, weren't weren't always the greatest. But now with the, with the Christian message tied to it, it it's got to seem like there's a great opportunity to reach into that culture, that urban culture of, uh, you know, with a great message with great music. And uh, so, how are you finding that? How are you using that? That's a great question. Uh, here's what I, I will explain it to you with a recent event that I did. So I I had an opportunity to DJ a video shoot for the NC State women's basketball team. Uh, they're doing really well this year, too, by the way. Uh, so shout to the Lady Wolfpack. Um, but I did this event and th they didn't really know that I was a Christian DJ off, yeah. off, off yeah. the bat. Now, I can't DJ an event and not bring the Lord with me. So that was going to happen. And so what I ended up doing was uh, I played a lot of popular music that you would hear on mainstream radio, secular radio stations. But I also mixed in Christian hip hop music. And this is how I know it's just as good or superior in many cases, because people hadn't heard those songs and they were dancing to them. Yeah. And they were coming up and they were asking me, who is this? I've never heard this song before. And I said, oh, yeah, this is Harvey, Love Like That. Oh, yeah, this is Lecrae, Your Power. Oh, yeah, this is Scooty Wop, Spin Back. And so um, I, I think sometimes playing the music side by side as a DJ, yeah. I have that opportunity. But secondly, um, we've had the opportunity as a radio station now to be on a very large platform like Series XM. And Series XM has been super gracious in promoting our station across their platforms. So, you know, we were on the biggest hip hop station on Sirius XM, Shade 45 recently, myself, uh, Trig, who's our CEO, and Baradox, who's one of our personalities as well, as well as an artist in his own right. And we were on their morning show. This is the radio station that Eminem 
the biggest hip hop artist ever, you know, is branded after him. It's called Shade 45. And so, you know, we were on that platform talking to them about the importance of having strong messages in the music. And other artists have been on that platform as well. D1, Lecrae, uh, Andy Minio. Uh, and so it's it's a you have to be willing to go to some places where there aren't Christians, yep. listen to them, meet them where they are, yeah. and then say, hey, I have a solution to the issues and problems that you have. So for me as a DJ, you book me for an event. Hey, the issues and problems you have in that moment is you need an atmosphere set. Well, I can mm -hmm. do that. Like I, I like yeah. I like I can do that, and I'm going to also bring my faith with me while yeah. I do it, so that you're encouraged and inspired. Yeah. And so, I think you know, regardless of what you're doing in life, if you're a teacher, if you're a janitor, if you're a CEO, if you're an educator, if you're a politician, there are people in your stratosphere who have issues and problems, and if you'll take some time to listen to them, you'll see the Lord open some doors and some opportunities for you to share a uh, glimpses of hope with them. And that's, that's just how I see it. Uh, you know, no, I and, and, and I think we all have that opportunity in that space. We do. Praise that's God. So Absolutely. <laughs> that was so good. Well, and, and I think it's great because, you know, we were all in that seat at one point, right? I mean, we were those non-saved Christians yeah. perhaps. So, I mean, yeah. just knowing that we have that ability to, to listen. And I think that's the thing is oftentimes we, we want to do all the talking, but really we need to listen be there, meet people where they are and, and find those bridges and then introduce them to, you know, Christ and his love and, and how that can be something that they can em embrace as well in their life. Karen, that is what someone did for me. Uh, it was a brother named Osaze Murray. Uh, he actually runs a campus ministry now at Bowie State, but that's what he did to me 20 years ago at Howard University. We were friends. We would hang out and he got saved before I did. And so he said, hey, I got this I got this new lease on life that God has given me. I'm going to try to, you know, share and witness to all my friends. And so uh, I saw his attitude change. I saw the way he treated me change. And we were always friends, but it was just there was something different about him that I didn't quite understand. And it was a servant's heart that God was developing in him. And, you know, long story short, you know, we started having really deep conversations and, you know, he shared the gospel with me. And every time I'd be falling asleep and all types of stuff. And one day he realized what I really needed. I needed to hear a testimony from someone who had gone through all the things that I had gone through. And so he got me a book uh, by a gentleman named Mason Betha, who used to be a rapper who had left the secular industry and became a pastor. And I read that book and it, it the Holy Spirit gripped me. It said, you're chasing everything this guy had. He gave it up because he realized it wasn't enough. And, uh, you know, that point changed my life. And I, again, I think we all, if we just listen to the people around us, you'll see some opportunities to serve them, but also share the gospel with them. And that's precisely how I came into the body of Christ. No, oh, that's, that's excellent testimony. That's so true. And I, you know, kind of uh, makes me ask a question, you know, at, you as a pastor now, a digital, uh, really a digital outreach uh, pastor, yep. that has changed the face of church a little bit. And, yes. you know, COVID certainly is given that opportunity a little bit more, but through that and through music, I mean, that is, seems like a, just an excellent way to reach, uh, mm -hmm. you know, these younger generations in this culture. So talk a little bit about, you know, your, growth in and move into being a pastor in the digital yeah. age and really reaching out through that. You know, what's funny. I always felt I had a call to be a pastor, but I didn't really know what to do with it. Like, you know, I kind of grew up in a church where, you know, it was a smaller church and it was, a, it was an African-American church. And so for most of us who grow up in those spaces, all you see is the senior pastor as if you're thinking about ministry as a career, and I'm like, man, I don't think God is calling me to be a senior pastor. And so I just I didn't know what to do with it. And so uh, when God moved us down here to North Carolina, 
and I started to uh, become a part of a much larger church. You know, I got into youth ministry because I'd always taught Sunday school and that kind of thing. Then I started realizing, man, there's a lot of different roles that you can play within the body of Christ that are still pastoral roles, but that aren't the senior or lead pastor. And so um, about a year ago, a little over a year ago now, um, some of the leaders at our church um, and I began having conversations about what it would look like for me to uh, head up our digital discipleship team. And it wasn't even really a, a pastoral position as much as it was, hey, we want you to really focus on getting the product and the, and all that stuff out. And, and for me, it's never been about titles. It's always been about the calling. And so I said, man, I've been doing digital ministry my entire life with podcasting and my radio stuff and Instagram and YouTube and, you know, all this different stuff. And I was just like, man, this is perfect. And so um, I, I think one of the one of the conversations that we have a lot um, when I trade notes with with uh, folks who do things similar to me at other churches is what is our role within the life of the church? And that's different from church to church. But, um, you know, what we kind of do at our church is say, hey, digital is important because there's so many people and you guys know this who won't step foot in a church for various reasons. Maybe it's church hurt. Uh, you know, maybe they've just never experienced it. They didn't grow up in church. Maybe there's a fear. Maybe there's misconceptions because they've only seen one type of Christianity that they're like, oh, I don't want anything to do with that. And so it's important for us to have places where people can go that are safe, that are low barriers to entry, that aren't a lot of commitment, because I still believe this, even though I'm in the digital space, we are made for physical community. I mean, this is important, but yes. if we were all in the same room, this conversation is even more dynamic because, you know, all of your senses are engaged. That's how God made us. And so I think online is a tool to reach people particularly when it's not possible to be in person. I mean, look, Paul wrote letters <laughs> like he wasn't and he was doing ministry to people back then, even when he wasn't in person. But what did he always say at the end of those letters? I'm going to come visit you soon because yes. he knew there was something special about being in person. And so um, I think it, it all has its proper place. I mean, it's a blessing. It's a it's a different way to connect with people. But I think ultimately God wants us to gather together in person because it's just there's just a different energy when we're in the room together absolutely that's 100 percent true and we we certainly see that too even with the work that we do here at covenant eyes a lot of people want to engage with recovery programs you know oh. in the virtual space but really at the end of the day we're always trying to guide people back to that home church where they can get connected because that one anotherness is so critical. It's kind of like listening to music at home while you're cleaning the house or being at a concert. That's, <laughs> like, that is a great, oh, I'm so you, mad. I've never, I, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to steal that. So if you hear me, hey, it's that, okay. I will give you credit the first time. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. <laughs> no, well, that's shoot. a great analogy though. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, it's great. Well, Tell us a little more about your new podcast, though. That sounds really exciting that you're doing with the church. And what, um, you know, what are going to be the topics that you talk about and who's the audience you're trying to reach with that? Oh, that's great. So um, this podcast is called Hope in Real Life. And uh, we actually created a persona uh, of the person that we want to talk to. And so uh, this individual is, you know, around 30 years old. Uh, they have a family. Uh, it's a male um, you know, they, they want to level up in life. They want to do well in life. Um, and they're on that path, but they have some debt. Um, they also have an emptiness because they don't go to church. And so, uh, we want to meet that person where they are. So a lot of practical things like, you know, finances, uh, marriage, parenting, uh, dealing with anxiety, uh, we literally just recorded a podcast with George Camel from Dave Ramsey's organization. Yeah. And, uh, just talked all about money and just, you know, how to get out of debt, how to manage your money properly, you know, how to save for college. You know, all those things that, um, you know, younger millennials, older Gen Zers um, are wrestling through. And even, you know, some of us older uh, you know, millennials and, and Gen Xers, you know, uh, you know, still working through a lot of that stuff. And so, um, you know, just really trying to help people 
um, be holistically healthy. I mean, that's another big one is physical health, emotional health, spiritual health, uh, just helping people take those steps that they need to take in order to, uh, you know, be the person that God has created them to be. And I think for a lot of us um, having conversations and hearing just regular people have conversations about those things will help you take the steps that you need to take um, to get to where you need to go. And so um, we started it uh, in May. No, no, no. We launched it in June and we just launched this past weekend uh, season two. And so uh, we have 13 episodes available uh, be 14 tomorrow. And, uh, you know, we have people, you know, again, George Camel's coming up. Uh, Pastor Leon's Crump from Renovation Church in Atlanta, uh, nice. Ben Foote, uh, who uh, speaks all over the country now. Uh, he's been a part of it. Uh, we also have some local business leaders. So Mako uh, Medical is one of the fastest growing uh, companies in the triangle. They have this amazing program they do uh, called Rise Up, where they uh, basically do Bible studies with their employees as a private company. And so, you know, wow. we talk a little bit about that faith in the workplace. And so, uh, I, I think there's, I think there's a lot of practical things for people that will be a blessing to them. And so, uh, the feedback we've gotten on this season two has been phenomenal. And so I'm just, I'm excited to keep going and, uh, just thankful that God has, uh, kind of given me, uh, this ministry to be a part of and help steward and, uh, just reach people in a different platform. Yeah, that is so on point. And uh, yeah, it's, it's exciting to hear. So one of the things Wade would love to do is, you know, we'll we'll put all of these points in, in the show notes here. But one more time, would you kind of give people that want to connect with your church, with your podcast, oh, yeah. yep. with your radio, what are those, what are those spots again? And we'll make sure we'll get them in the show notes, but uh, yep. so people can follow up with you. So um, on Series XM, it's Channel 140, uh, Holy Culture, it's 24 hours a day. So, um, you know, there's always music and personalities on. Uh, I mean, and we're a full radio station. Like we have a real morning show that's on from six to 10 every day, midday show, afternoon drive show. I'm the evening show. I come on from six to eight uh, Eastern Standard Time. Uh, and so uh, social media, if you just Google Holy Culture, you know, holyculture.net is the website. Uh, my personal uh, social media, I'm DJ Wado on Twitter and I am DJ Wado on Instagram and threads. Uh, you can follow me there. And then the church that I, I'm a part of is a Hope Community Church. It's in Raleigh, uh, North Carolina. We have campuses uh, in Raleigh, uh, in Cary, uh, in Apex, right on the border of Apex and Holly Springs. We're also in Garner High School. And then we just opened a new campus in Fuquay, Verena. And then, of course, online at gethope.tv. Uh, you may see a familiar face hosting some of those services. So uh, you can definitely check us out there. But um, ultimately, I want you to get connected with the Lord. And so uh, all of those platforms that I just mentioned are to help you develop a deeper relationship with God. And so, again, Holy Culture uh, and, and GetHope.TV are the places you want to be. So. Amen. That's awesome. Well, as we bring this episode to a close, I do have to ask one fun question. So what are you listening to? What's what's the great you know music you've got in your uh, playlist this week? OK, so uh, I'm going to I'm going to give you a couple of artists. Uh, one is Harvey. Uh, I mean, he's a young guy and just amazing, uh, just has a, a wide range of music. So definitely check out Harvey. Uh, definitely want to encourage you to check out Caleb Gordon, another young guy. Uh, my good friend Tadashi just put out an album. Uh, and to, I'm going to just tell y'all right now, just, that's the name you're familiar with probably for it. Cause he's been with Lecrae for a while. He still mm -hmm. got it. He still nice. got it. the OG still got it. <laughs> um, and then I'll throw out, uh, Miles Minnick. Definitely check out Miles Minnick. Uh, he's from the West coast. And so, uh, he has that music that's going to make you dance. It's, you know, it's, it, it actually will remind you, Karen, a lot of the 90s because he's in that 95 to 100 BPM. And so, Ooh, nice. so that, stuff, that stuff we used to dance to. At yes. The, <laughs> that Miles minix has got that tempo. So love uh, it. That, that's your workout music. That's your workout All right. music. Yeah. So perfect. Uh, so much, so much, so much stuff. I mean, on gospel side, Jonathan McReynolds is amazing. Uh, there's a new R&P artist named Young Chris 
who's really, really good. He's actually uh, number one on my countdown right now. And so, um, yeah, definitely. Awesome. Well, you just gave us all like some homework to do. So we're going to go yeah. check out these artists and definitely get that into my playlist. So I love it. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, thank you so much for joining us tonight. We really appreciate it. And gosh, it's been such a pleasure to get to know you over the, the last few years too. Yeah. So keep up the great yeah. work and keep sharing the good news. So we love it. Nah, thank you. And uh, again, I I'm thankful uh, for what you guys do. And we didn't talk a lot about this, but I, I want to say this on the air. Covenant Eye Software changed my life. It, I mean, just point blank uh, in so many different ways. And so what you guys do as a company um, is, is priceless. And uh, I, I think everybody should have something Covenant Eyes um you know on your phone on your app because it just it it encourages you to have conversations that you may not want to have but that you need to have that will be so helpful for you and so uh just thank you guys thank you guys for everything you guys are doing to get the word out there and most importantly to help people break free from the bondage of pornography absolutely thank, thank you. you and thank you to all of our listeners for tuning into this episode we'll see you next time on the covenant eyes podcast god bless take care God bless.